In a day of many voices, unlimited opinion, and countless division, God desires to restore you back to truth. But what is truth? How is it known? Men long ago dedicated their very lives to bring you the great liberty of knowing the truth, the truth that makes men free. For the process was no wordcraft, nor contrivance of human devices, but the translation of the divine scripture, spoken by the Holy Ghost, was of the Holy Ghost accomplished. As to the ignorant and simple, they have been led astray by evil thoughts concerning the right faith established in all truth. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. I believe that, in the end, truth will conquer. Peace, if possible, truth at all costs. If God spare my life, ere as many years, I will cause a boy who drives a plow to know more scripture than the Pope. As darkness increases and men cloak the truth with deception, there is a truth that has the power to penetrate even the hardest heart and lead us to a place of safety. It speaks louder than government, remains stronger than denomination, and is exalted to a higher position than even God's name. Join us over the next few minutes as Scott C. Lovett restores the truth of Jesus Christ to its rightful position in your life as the final word. I'm Brother Scott Lovett, and I'm excited that you're here with me today. Now listen, we deal with real stuff on this program. We deal with the Word of God, and we're right in the middle of a series called Soterology. What is Soterology? It is the study of the work of salvation. It is a total work of salvation. We are talking about salvation, and there are people watching this program right now, and all around us sitting in church, that have not had an inward change. They are not new creatures. They're the same old creatures with a Jesus bumper sticker. We ought to stop that stuff in America. We really have to stop it. I made myself laugh, didn't I? They're the same old creatures with a Jesus bumper sticker with a hallelujah on top. We got to become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things have to pass away. We've been talking about salvation. While we're on this program, go to one, dial 1-888-242-5229. Someone wants to pray with you. When you feel really convicted in your heart, go to that phone and dial. Listen, we want you to have a real relationship with Jesus. We want salvation to start in your life. A lot of people think salvation is just a sinner's prayer. It's not. Let me put this back up and we'll get started here today. Well, salvation is more than just saying a prayer. It's more than just filling a card. It is actually wanting a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is wanting to be like Christ. It is wanting to learn his ways. It is wanting him to take away the sin nature that keeps you away from God. It is wanting God to restore you back to the Holy Spirit, the right spirit of God. Now see, that sin nature you got, it makes you afraid of God. But that's not God. That's the devil. The devil now is at work inside of man in the soul realm making you feel like God's mad at you because you messed up. He knew you messed up. He came down from heaven, died for you on the cross. He wants to deliver your sin and set you free. Why did God take away your sin? I've asked people all over this country, why did Jesus take away your sin? Well, because he loved me. No, there's more to it than that. Yes, he did love you. He loved the whole world. He died for every man's sin, every person's sin. But he took away your sin so you could be filled with the spirit of God. So you yourself could overcome issues and overcome sins that have bound you up. When you came to the Lord, you were forgiven of your past sins. You're forgiven of your sins right now. If you're a believer, you're forgiven. But you're supposed to go to the Word and figure out how to rule over those sins. To win, to get victory after victory, glory after glory, faith after faith. Today, I'm excited to be on this broadcast with you because when you receive the Lord in your heart, you want to be like Jesus. You want to bear his character and his nature. Something begins to happen. Well, one, one of the first things that begins to happen is that God can only, who qualifies to get all the promises in this Bible? Who qualifies to get all the goodness of God? Who qualifies to walk in the blessing every day? Who qualifies to get all of the blessing? Who qualifies for that? Who qualifies to have a good life? Well, the fact is, is according to the law, a just man qualifies. Let's go right now to the text. Let's go to Ezekiel 18, 5 through 9. Before we can be gods and reap the benefits or help from God, the law requires us to be just. We've got to be just. We've got to uh, be justified. We've got to uh, be just to receive something, okay? Ezekiel 18, 5 through 9. 
But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither has come near to a mistress woman, and, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, has covered the naked with a garment. He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statute, hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you read that text and it disqualifies everybody. Because I guarantee you, when we went down the list, somebody broke that law. Some of you went near a menstruous woman. Some of you stole somebody's property. Some of you have iniquity in your heart. Me too. So where's a just man? Who can find a just man? See, there was no just man. God, Jesus Christ, took a body, died for your sins. To, he was the only one just. He was the only one just. He was just. He did everything perfect. He did everything right. He is the one with the power. He is the one with the anointing. He is the one with the authority. Perfect one. He is God in the flesh. He is the one that is just. So the only way uh, God could see man's true motive was to look on the heart. They kept doing crazy things on the outside, but God went and looked on the heart. He looked on the heart. God said, hold on just a minute. They're not doing things right, but some of them do have a heart towards me. And that's what we're trying to find out. You want to be saved? You have a heart towards God? Do you want God? Do you want his way? Do you love him? You're going to walk with him even when you mess up? Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs 24, 16. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rise up again, but a wicked shall fall in the mischief. Someone that is trying to do right. Someone that is trying to follow the principles of good. Someone that is trying to be just. They will fall seven times, but they will get back up again. Just, a just man. But a wicked person, they just fall. Man, keep falling. Man, fall a little more and keep falling. So we're sitting in church right now and people are going, well, they're a good person. And they're not if they just keep falling and falling and falling and falling. Listen, you've got to get Jesus in your heart. You've got to want his way. His way is not down in the dirt. It wasn't down with the prodigal son. It was coming back up and going back to the father's house. It was going towards the things of God. What is salvation? When you receive the Lord as your savior, when you receive him, something marvelous happens. Something wonderful happens. Put up the word just up there. Put up that definition. Just. The word just means him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of God and therefore needs no rectification of the heart, making one approved and acceptable to God. Now, I don't know of anybody whose will has been totally given to, the, given to God. We're struggling. That sin nature, we do what we want to do when we want to do it. But see, that's the point of the Holy Spirit. You remove that sin and the Holy Spirit comes and begins to make you like Jesus and helps you walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. Work out your salvation. Follow Jesus Christ every day. Learn who he is. Learn who he is. Acts 13, 38. So it's like this. We got church folks sitting in church that think they need no correction. We have people watching right now. You really think you need no correction. Preacher for preaching from the pulpit. I'm preaching correction. I need correction. You need correction. Unless you're perfect like Jesus. And I don't, I, I don't see it yet. Uh, we're, we're moving that way. We're trying to become the bride of Christ. We're trying to follow God. We're allowing his Holy Spirit to teach us and train us, not by man's will, but by the will of God. Meaning the more time you spend with God, the more the Holy Spirit takes you over and you're able to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You're able to cut off sin. Uh, the sin you sinned yesterday, you should be getting victory over it. You should be walking closer to God. Okay. Acts 13, 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe, all that believe, you must believe. I'm preaching to you right now. You must believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. God took a body, died for your sins. In that blood is the forgiveness of sins. And all that believe, all that believe that God came and died for them. What kind of God? What kind of God? 
The God of love that came from heaven, took on a body, died for your sin, even though he had none. Muhammad didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. They're, they're called prophets, but they sinned. There is no other false religion that's based on a man that died for your sin. This is not just a man. This is God in the flesh. This is God in the flesh. We're talking about Jesus is God in the flesh. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also at once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Ooh, I have good news for you today. I have good news for you. Ooh, I just feel the Holy Ghost right now. I have good news for you today. If you love Jesus, if you believe upon the blood, if you quit running from God and, and say, thank you, God, for washing me clean. Thank you, God. I got some sin. I need deliverance. I need your blood to pour over me. You are justified. You know what justified means? Do you really know what that means? Uh, a lot of us, we're computer savvy, right? We're computer savvy. We, we work on a word processor or, or word or works. What happens when you go up and, and, and at the top, you know, we have center, we have left hand, we have right hand, but then we have one called justify, justify. And when you click that justify on that page, all those words spread out margin to margin. What happens is, is the blood of Jesus is trying to let you receive this whole book cover to cover. I'm justified for the whole Bible. I'm justified to read its pages. I'm justified to become like Jesus. I'm justified to have my healing. I'm justified. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of Jesus, I'm justified to walk in the works of the spirit. I'm justified. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You're justified. You are justified to follow Jesus Christ. Right now, maybe you've been going through religion. You feel like dirt every time you go. Then you might want to get a relationship with God. You might want to talk with God and put it under the blood. You might want to walk up and start living for God and start, stop letting the devil make you feel like trash. The price has been paid for. You are justified to have the whole book from cover to cover. You can live this book cover to cover. The Holy Spirit's coming to help you. You're justified, but you got to be taught. You got to learn. You got to defeat those things that have come. And every man has weakness. Every man has weakness. You have weakness. Call right now. 1-888-242-5229. I want to know your name. The prayer partners are bringing me your names. I'm praying over them. I want to know you. I want to know you. I may call you. I don't know. The Holy Ghost is moving right now. I stretch forth my hand. I command condemnation to leave you. I command condemnation to leave you right now. I ask that the Holy Spirit, the God of love, would say, come back to me. Come back to me, America. Come back to me, children. Come back to me, mom. Come back to me, dad. Turn off the smut on the TV. Turn it off. Turn me off and get on your knees and pray. Get on your knees and pray. Get on your knees and talk to God. Woo, the Holy Ghost is moving right now. You're not too far away. You're not too far away. God loves you. Oh, hallelujah. We got to go to a clip. I'm, I'm going to catch up with you in just a second. God is good. Corruption charges related to a D.U.S. political scandal. Crisis for the White House. Congress is under control. Tonight in the IRS targets the biggest cover up since Warren. Political bullying to secure the voters that are tampering with evidence. Someone to tell the truth. Turn this nation around. Store confidence in officials. Urban Fire Ministries has answered the call. The Capitals Tour is in full swing as we travel to all 50 state capitals, carrying the Spirit of God and letters admonishing our legislators to return to the biblical principles that made America great. Join us in prayer as we shine the light into these dark corridors of government. Log on to FerventFire.com and follow us on the Capitals pages. While you're there, click the donate button at the top of the screen. It's fast, easy, and effective. Fervent Fire Ministries, it's not too late for America. Let your voice join ours in the halls of government. We can make a difference in this nation, and you can be a part. Hello, I'm Apostle Scott Lovett, and I'm looking for 500 Holy Ghost-filled members to join me here at Real Church at 315 South Sheridan Road. 
That doesn't mean that you have to have a background in church. Maybe this is the first time you've seen this broadcast. I want to invite you to join us to have an experience with God. God will change you from the inside out. Do you go to church to have an experience with God? Or do you go for the donuts? Hopefully not the donuts. Hopefully God gets a hold of you when you go to church. Tulsa, wake up. Join me at 315 South Sheridan Road at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings and join the Real Church congregation and let's form a body that's going to shake this nation. Oh, hallelujah. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be praised. I said he died for you and he's greatly to be praised. You have a reason to rejoice. We're not talking about condemnation. The only condemnation is that you wouldn't believe on Jesus, the Son of God, who died for your sins because you loved evil and loved darkness more than you love light. I bring my sin to the light and I'm set free. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be like this. I need your help, Jesus. I want Jesus to touch me. I want to feel the love of God. I'm tired of feeling shame, doubt, and unbelief. I'm tired of fear. I'm justified to receive the whole book. I'm justified. Jesus justified me. He justified me. That means that I, through the work of the Holy Spirit, have the power to live the gospel. I can believe the word. I can do it by faith. I can open up my spirit. I can grow from faith to faith, glory to glory. No one's going to tell me that I can't have the experiences that Paul had. No one's going to tell me I can't have the book of Acts experience. No one's going to tell me I can't hear God's voice. Why? Because he loves me. He loves me. He loves you. Are you tired of hearing the other voices? You say, I don't hear voices. Yes, you do. Stupid, dumb, idiot. You hate this life. Kill yourself. Throw yourself off of a bridge. Mm. Divorce your wife. Your kids are brats. I hate going to work. Where do you think those voices come from? Not God. God says, life is wonderful. Life is beautiful. You're holy. You're righteous. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My family is beautiful. I'll lay down my life for my children. I love, 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 love. Love. We are justified. Let's go to the next text. Let's go to Romans 1, 16 through 18. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Say, what was that? I'm praying in the spirit. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. God is good. Romans 1, 16 to 18. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed of it? When you're with all your, your, your crazy friends, are you ashamed of it? They're, they're so-called Christian people. Ashamed for me to say the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first, also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. God has showed it. Deep down, you know you're not doing right. But nobody's blaming you. You're going to get Jesus in your heart. You're going to believe and believe and believe and believe this word. It's going to establish you. You're going to know how to live a better marriage. You're going to know how to pay your tithes and offerings. You're going to know how to move in the spirit. You're going to know how to hear God's voice from faith to faith, from glory to glory. You're going to stop being afraid of God. You're going to stop being afraid of the truth. Because the truth sets you free. When you follow Jesus, the truth sets you free. Free, it sets you completely free. You are justified. The just, the just shall live by faith. I believe I'm justified to receive these things. I'm justified to have these things. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Well, you church people, you church people, my grandma told me I shouldn't sin. Look down her nose at me. No, your grandma was changed from the inside out and she was wanting you to have the same experience. She was wanting you to quit hurting. She was wanting you to quit doing meth. She was wanting you to have a better life. The older generation, they came out of great revivals. 
We won't even move out of our seat. We won't even call on God. But we'll call on the government. We'll call on every other entity. We'll call our grandparents bad words. Listen to me. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. What, what kind of church people are church people? I'm going to tell you. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, neither thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. And such were some of you. But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified of the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. You are justified. Your grandma did things she never told you about. And one time she went down to the altar and she prayed and all that came off of her. And she said, focus on God. Don't focus on the other stuff that's going to hurt you. Your mom and dad did things you don't know about. And they went to an altar and God met them there and changed them on the inside. They felt pain like you felt. Listen to me, generation. My generation, wake up! You're hurting yourself. You're deceiving yourself. You do wrong all the time. But you need Jesus. You get the Holy Spirit inside of you and you can say, I used to be that. I'm not that anymore. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be, I want to love like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. You can do that. Oh, ma'am, you can do that. You can do that. Not through your own will, but by calling upon the Lord, receiving what he's done for you and saying, I want your spirit, Jesus. Wash me clean, Jesus. Fill me with your love. Woman that's been abused, you got to forgive that man. you got to forgive that person. you got to forgive him. It's going to take the love of Jesus. It's going to take the love of Jesus. Pastor, religious person that's so arrogant, that sits in church, acts like you have no hurt. Look at your children. Look at your family. Your religion and practicing being a Baptist or a Methodist didn't make them like Jesus. You should have taught them to be Christ-like. You should have taught them the character and the nature of God before you taught them religion. We've got to turn back to God. We've got to turn back to God in this country. Listen to me. I want you to call 1-888-242-5229. I've written a book called Soterology. I want to send that to you. You can call and talk to them. Find out what you got to do to get it. Uh, it might be a love, a love gift. I don't even know how much it is right now. Uh, the, there's a, a CDs back there, seven-part series. You can go on ferventfire.com. You can download $2.50 a sermon. If you have no money, call right now because we're going to send you the Walk of Salvation, the Salvation Walk. Uh, for free. Call right now. We'll send it to your family members. You're worried about them. They're not living holy, not living righteous. Call right now. They, they never had a preacher tell them what salvation was. They thought it was the prayer. They didn't know they were supposed to have a heart change. I'll see you. We'll be back in a few minutes. In just a few minutes. The man, the Holy Ghost is strong. Mm, he's touching your heart. Call the number. There's someone there to pray for you right now. I want to hear your name. Join me in partnership. God's touching. We'll be right back. Here I am standing right down on the street of the Lincoln's home, right behind me, right here. This is the Lincoln's home. I'm talking about their original home. It even has furniture in it, horsehair furniture that, uh, that they had from the day. You know, everybody wants to venerate Lincoln for his speeches. He was a powerful speech maker and he was caught. A lot of people don't know this, but he was caught when he became president uh, four months before he even got there, seven states seceded from the union. He was caught in his efforts to bring this nation back together. But long before that, he fought against slavery because he knew it was a moral evil. Listen to me today. Out of all of the speeches that he gave that are venerated, one of my problems with the state that we're in is that whenever they do clips in movies or, or talk or give tours, they always skip over the parts of the speeches that contain God. <laughs> in, in one of his speeches, he talked about his farewell speech to his community. He talked about that the God of George Washington would keep them safe and that he would pray that everybody in this town would be kept safe. Why is it we keep skipping over God? 
You tell me, politician. You tell me, uh, state representatives. You say you have no documented evidence, but the documentation is in the very speech that you read. And we are in a day when we want to skip over those parts because it was God who brought morality. It is God who sets morals and the God of love. Abraham Lincoln said that he knew that, that God would be everywhere, that God would keep him and keep the people of this town, just like God kept George Washington. What God? The Christian God, the one that wants morality, that put that in their hearts. The abolitionists want morality to set men free, and God wants to set you free of sin, the sin nature. But to acknowledge God is to acknowledge our deficient state and the things that we do. Wake up and let's not change history's words. evangelists and TV preachers are just out for money in your day, let me give you a juicy tip of information. Long before the Lincolns ever went to the White House, they went to church right here at this Presbyterian church. And you know what they did? For 10 years, they bought a pew. They bought a pew. They rented a pew for their family in this church. It was a way the church raised money. Whether they were in attendance or not, uh, you know, didn't really matter. Sounds like a lot of church folks now, nowadays, they call themselves Christians, but they never go to church. How do I know that Mary could have used a little bit more church? When she got to the White House, she had a seance, a seance to call up her son. Listen to me. She needed to be in these pews. Written ones, not good enough. We've got to have Jesus in our hearts. We've got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and watch him change our lives. Today is the day of the Lord, and we're expecting great things for this country. We're expecting Jesus to come into the hearts of men. you and I again. Uh, I've been traveling, going to the capitals. So you're seeing those clips and I've been serving letters to all the politicians too. So I've been preaching at them too. I'm preaching at everybody. I'm doing my job as a preacher. If you've enjoyed this broadcast today, enjoy the teaching on salvation. Call 1-888-242-5229 and uh, let us know that. You want to become a partner? I need your help. This needs to go across the airwaves of this nation. You know it and I know it. And God wants to change the hearts of people in your family. Uh, you can call and get the free CDs. I really need your prayers. I want you to join me in this task. I need you to help me. Um, come back next time, and we're going to talk some more about the total walk of salvation. We're going to go on to the next, next segment. You won't want to miss it. Tell people to tune in. I love you. I'll see you next time. In this latest release by Scott C. Lovett, you will discover what it means to be saved and walk in relationship with Jesus Christ. The Soterology Package includes a book and six CDs. But if you call right now, we'll send you a copy of The Salvation Walk absolutely free. These powerful tools will answer any questions you may have about your salvation walk. So call the number at the bottom of your screen right now and order Soterology, The Total Walk of Salvation. Don't miss this opportunity. Call now. If you're not enjoying life, you're doing it wrong.